Hi, this is the advisor with Stacey Chalemi, the founder of the Complete Herbal Guide. Today, I have a very special guest that I'm excited to introduce to you. It's Mary Kay Savaris, and she has a great story to tell. Originally, she had studied um, business and accounting, and she had changed her whole path and her whole career to something that she actually had a passion for. So she is an author and a speaker, and she loves to write books, and she has a lot of really cool books that she's going to tell you about with a lot of quirky titles and really great themes that go along with it. Her, their fun stories and she's going to tell you all about herself and everything that's going to make you want to listen to this and be totally intrigued because she is just an amazing person. Hi Stacy, it's amazing to be here with you. Excuse me, I'm just hearing thunder behind me. So <laughs> if you hear that, <laughs> no, I don't hear that. Okay, You're in Florida, good. so I know that you guys get a lot of short storms going around. <laughs> I just like turned around. It was so loud, but I am so thrilled to be here with you today. Just speaking to you for a couple minutes before we started, I feel like we're soul sisters <laughs> in what we were discussing. Yeah. But um, no, I, I am thrilled to be here. You, you touched so much upon me. I don't know what else to throw in there except to throw out the titles of my books and well, how, how about they we came about. start like this. How about we just tell everybody about you yourself, let them know okay. who you are and tell them, you know, what you do. So tell okay. everybody, our audience. Okay. Um, I am a um, traditionally published author and speaker. Um, my books have won awards. They've been on the best selling list um, on Amazon. And it's a journey that um, I like to joke and say, I'm an overnight success and uh, a 10 year overnight success hmm. because um, that was my goal. Um, I raised um, three children and they went off to school and always in the back of my head, I had a desire to write my degree, as you mentioned, was in accounting and financing. Everything went on the back burner because, you know, we work, we take care of the house. I mean, we have a husband, we take care of the kids. We are the center of our home. We wear all those hats and those titles are so so part of us as anything else. Definitely. So um, when my first went off to college, I just said, oh, this is the time. I have some ideas. Let me prove to myself that I can write. And so my journey began. I started with the manuscript two years later. And back then, snail mail, and at least publishers were willing to look at your work. They sent back, um, you know, um, what they just sent back what they thought about your work and right. um but two years nothing happened I put that manuscript on the back burner and I went on to write other manuscripts and I just had such a passion for it yeah and um everything else that um it would always bring me back and I had all these ideas and as you mentioned I love to write with quirky titles and the titles come from experiences in my life and I start with the title, I weave the story in my head, and then I create those characters, and then I get to work. Now, you say a lot of this stuff came from experiences. Yep. Like, you know, we experience things every day. What made you draw to certain experiences that made you actually want to put all your energy into writing a book? Well, um, my first manuscripts um, came from um, the first manuscript I wrote, which has not been published. So that was um, a family historical experience. Right. Um, did not get published. I went on to um, second manuscript, third manuscript. All had quirky titles. It wasn't until my fourth manuscript that finally a small publishing house was interested. And the title, it is a mystery romance intertwined with spiritual or supernatural twist. Wow. And several years ago in Florida, I was visiting a friend in St. Augustine, and she took me to an old folks home, get this, for big cats, not little kittens and cats, tigers and lions and panthers and big cats that were tossed aside like an old shoe from cable shows 
oh, TV wow. shows, movies, or even back then, um, several years ago, people were still allowed to keep tigers as pets. Wow. And so tigers were brought to this um, reserve in St. Augustine. And um, I walk up, this was part of the tour. I go up to the last part of the tour and it's a bat 16 feet wide, five feet high, overflowing with bubbles, Stacy. And I said, what is this? And out saunders this, um, 600 pounds Siberian tiger, oh and I'm close. I'm close. <laughs> there are only maybe about 10 of us on this tour. Wow. And there's a wildlife handler, thin, thin cage, and she's standing on steps right above the bubbles. He slips into this bubble bed. Looks like he took off a robe, slips in, sticks his tongue out. She sprays his tongue with the obsession perfume, and I went, Oh my God, tigers love bubble baths and obsession perfume. Who knew? <laughs> the title of my fourth manuscript and my first traditionally published book. And with that title, it became a metaphor because my publisher said, Mary, please tell me there's a tiger in this somewhere. And I said, <laughs> it's the climax. And it became a metaphor because as these big old cats are tossed aside like an old shoe. So is my protagonist, Angie Pantera. After 25 years of marriage, middle-aged, we're middle-aged women, she's tossed aside like an old shoe and begins life anew. So that's why the title is the way it is. And I weaved, and you know what it is? It's a mystery because it's one death after another, all these twists and turns. Right. And you don't know, is it Angie that's the murderer or is she going to be murdered? Right. So that became my first foray into the published world. And that's a whole other session. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. I, you know, I love books like that because even sometimes even um, certain, you know, t uh, cable shows and certain um, shows will have movies and they leave you hanging and yes. it makes you so intrigued to want to keep reading or keep watching this movie, you know, because when they leave you at the end of the chapter, at the end of the book, and you're still in awe, it, well, it can't be that person because, or it can't be this person because, then who is it, you know, and it's, it's pretty much, you know, um, something that I think most people love is the hanger, because it makes you so intrigued to want to know what's next. Now, from going from one career into this next career, what was the most challenging things that you had to endure? Because that's a big step. You went from the business world to the writing world. And as a book writer, it's a harsh world. You know, people are very straightforward. They'll, you know, not everyone's going to like your style of writing. You know, a lot of doors will close, but yet a lot of doors will open. So it's a hard field to get into. What challenges did you endure? Because you kept going and going and going and you succeeded. So tell well, us about the challenges and how you didn't give up and why you didn't give up. Um, at the time, um, <clears throat> as we said, um, I had become an empty nester. So that first child had left, but I had two others. So um, through the years, as I kept sending in these manuscripts, you just have to build a thick skin. And um, I loved it so much. It was such a passion in my life. And as you said, how did I get to this point? Well, as you're raising a family, yes, I worked full time. I worked part time. I volunteered. So that gradually went down. Right. So now as the third daughter, um, well, I have three kids, uh, yeah. a, a daughter, a son, and the youngest was a daughter. She was a senior in college. So she still had one more year. Something strange started to occur with me that summer yeah. as she was entering her senior year. And I've always been a person, I've had anxiety, but nothing that was overwhelming, Stacy. that yeah. knocked me on my rear end. And I started to have physical symptoms mm -hmm. and the, um, where my legs were becoming numb. I thought ha I had neuropathy. I went through all those medical tests yeah. and everything. Nope, nothing. And finally, they just said, Mary, something's going on. 
I, I think you should talk to a therapist. Now, for some people, yes, meds, I didn't know any better. Um, I agreed with the doctor. I had such severe anxiety. They said, Mary, let's just put you on some mild, mild anxiety medication. And I agreed. But what I learned through my process, Stacey, is it's not the, the pill that takes care of everything. You still have to work at it. Yeah. And it took me a good year and a half working with the therapist. And finally, what I figured out was I had to come to terms, and this is going to sound really crude and crass, I had to come to terms with the fact that my family unit was dead. And what I mean by that, the babies I raised, like you, the toddlers we chased, the teenagers, we stayed up all night waiting for them to come home. They were gone. I was not ready for that part of my life to leave. And I didn't accept it. Once I finally was able to come to terms with that, I was crossing that bridge. And during that whole time, that passion of writing and creating, that helped me. Yeah. And um, because those rejections, I mean, they were constantly coming in, but I was always, I went, as you know, if you it's delve expensive. into, right, when you delve into something and your mind isn't on you, what happens? you can concentrate and um, you, that creativity flows. And that's oh, what helped me to everything. And finally, even after my fourth manuscript was published, you think it would be easy at that point. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. And I'm so humbled and thrilled to say that the Tigers book, it won eight awards. Yes. And it was mm -hmm. on the um, Amazon best-selling ebook list. So, That's I mean, amazing. You, say, so you would think at that time that publishers would come knocking on my door. No, it wasn't that. I had right. another idea for a trilogy. I presented it to my publisher. And my publisher, even though other publishers were looking, they want some type of a series. I did not have a series. People kept saying to me, um, you know, the Tigers, the Bubble Bats, is there a sequel to that? And I said, what I actually thought is it would make a great Netflix. Hello, producers. <laughs> because there are wishes in there. Yeah. And as these people make wishes, well, they have to then go on <laughs> yeah. to die. And that's where the murders come in. So that would be great. But I did not have another sequel on me with that. But I had an idea for a trilogy. Right. And my publisher was not approaching trilogies at that time. So I just at that point started to go to other um, publishing houses. And I was so thrilled to say that um, an all women publishing house and Digner House, they were interested and they signed Excellent. me for a three book deal. And wow. um, again, we began the first book in the trilogy, The Girl in the Toile Wallpaper um, was published and People are gonna say, Mary, what is twilight? I'll do interviews and they'll just toilet wall, toilet wallpaper, Mary. Right. And twile is so much a part of our everyday lives. It's a creative wall covering fabric, two-toned, very bright, that tells a story. Right. Um, I have a sample of it here. I usually show the audience. See you you see a story. It's yes. people. It can be anything contemporary. Be anything. Yeah. And I'm, I had it in my home as wall covering and I would walk by this wall covering and I saw love, betrayal, I saw fantasy. So that became the first book in um, the Star Riders trilogy. Right. And um, I love to take you on, um, I mean, I love fantasy. That's my absolute favorite because as we all know, reality is too real. Yeah. So love, I love I to love fantasy. Jump I'm I a Pisces, like yeah. Right? <laughs> Need I say more? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, you know, we've all been there. And I think that was one of the reasons you and I connected so beautifully is we as women wear so many hats and yeah. we hold the family together. And um, when I was embarrassed. When this was all happening to me, I kept quiet mm -hmm. and I was embarrassed. I was like, I I can handle anything. Why right. can't I handle this? And it took a very good friend of mine um, in the psychology field that said, Mary, it's time. Let's get yeah. you some help. Right. And I can um, relate to that. Totally. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So you went for the therapy. 
I, I and the therapy helped me and honestly it took me a year and a half and when I felt strong enough with the therapy because the therapist was wonderful we would meet and she would always have me visualize it's hysterical now a bus and she would say to me Mary who's driving your bus and for weeks and weeks, I would always say the biatch was driving. <laughs> the bus. We all know who the biatch is. And the whole goal was her for this therapist to help me get that biatch in the back of the bus. Right. right? And to get joy and happiness to be that driver of your bus. And it took a long time. And but they teach you um, techniques to deal with. Yeah. Um, which is such a help. And then after a year and a half, I finally went to my doctor and I said, I think I can do this on my own. Right. And they just went dwindled down the anxiety medication. But let me tell you, I mean, I, I have Xanax. If I need it, I'll take it. I'm a right. glass of wine, you know, because we never, you know, anxiety to a point is good because we can procrastinate but anxiety will push us to do what we need to do. But when it becomes so overwhelming and you have physical challenges, that's when you really should seek help. So um, I am all for, for medication. You talk with your doctor, therapy. I I think it's all wonderful. And then um, now I can joyfully say I've crossed that bridge and other challenges in my life I've had other bridges to cross like you years. really you really you know you gained empowerment you know we, yes you know I love, and, I love your book there yeah <laughs> empower yes. yourself yes, yes because I went through the same thing you did you know I have three children myself and you know one they all went off to college and like you said we wore all these hats and then it's like okay I have my career my husband my shih tzus but where am I now, you know? And so many women go through this as an empty nester and it could be very dramatizing to an individual, but you overcame it. You know, you, you, you know, a lot of times people will repress their emotions and, you know, they will, it's very, sometimes it's very hard because you open yourself up for illness. you open yourself up for a lot of bad things to happen, depression, mm-hmm. anxiety, and, you know, other, you know, once you, one door opens, the other ones follow. And before you know it, you know, you could be destroying your life, you know, piece by piece until something really happens. That's really bad one day. So, yeah, I mean, go ahead. You nailed that, you know, nail right on the head, because what you said is as that one door closes, God opens something else. And, you know, um, whatever challenges you face, you face for a reason. And you do come out better on the other side of it. And he's not going to let you go through something you can't handle. It's, you know, like I say, it's, you know, do it, try to get through it. It may not be easy, but keep stay positive with yourself and always love yourself and you know say to yourself I can do this and never ever give up on yourself it may not happen overnight but it'll happen and that like for me I had the the writing creativity yeah so I could always go into that but for other people it could be other things gardening um you know just arts and volunteering and some people I mean these some people you see what they craft it's unbelievable I'm amazed and that gives you such purpose and joy so you really need to find something like that in your life to help you get through those challenges and once you start concentrating on those things then your mind isn't going a million you know miles an hour right you're focusing on productive things And like you said, you know, everybody has a passion. And if you don't know what your passion is, seek inside you and figure it out. Because if you have a hobby or you, you know, some people like to journal, some people like to write like you, I started writing like crazy and journaling, but not everybody's a writer. So find something like gardening or, you know, do self crafts and you start feeling good about yourself. Now, by you, you know, finding your passion, do you feel like the things you just mentioned, feeling positive, finding, doing the things you love, you know, how, is that how you built your empowerment up? How, how you got to the point where you are today? Face your fears. That's what I always say to myself. You have to face your fears. It's so hard. But if you just take little baby steps, then all of a sudden, 
you have that empowerment because it, it gets out of the way. Right. And it's really for us, it's all about those fears. But the um, the older you get, you're like, who the hell cares anymore? Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a mentality that a lot of people yes. take, but they should care because every minute yes. that you're on this planet, you know, we're here for a purpose. And every minute, you know, you never know how long you may have on this on this planet. You know, why not live life to the fullest and be happy? Why live a life yeah. of misery if you don't have to, you know? Focus, like you said, on the positive things. Face your fears. Yes. So would you say facing your fears is getting out of that denial stage, realizing that there is an issue going on and then you have to do something about it? Yes. Yeah, it's everything. Every day we're confronted with so many fears in our life. And it's just, if you take care of it, again, it does help with the anxiety and then you're empowered. Yes. Because it's like, oh, that wasn't so hard. Right. It's scary, but yeah. once you do it, I think we gain strength, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. You gain, you gain the strength, you gain courage, you learn from the experience, so now mm -hmm. you have wisdom, and you also gain hope because you're realizing, okay, you know, I became stronger, I overcame this, you know, I had, you know, there is hope, there is, there is, you know, yeah. there is something there, you know? Right, and you're grateful. Like, I'm grateful I went through this. We go through these things for a reason. Yes. So be grateful for that instead of fearing it. I realize too, you know, we have to have gratitude because I think everything in life happens for a reason. Some, some people will look at me strangely when I say that and some people understand, but you know, I believe in life, everything happens for a reason. And, mm -hmm. you know, all these experiences, you know, build us to be a better person if we are able to, you know, look at life in a, in a positive way and use those experiences, maybe to advocate to others like you're yeah. doing now. Yeah. And that is that I think that's so important. If you are a negative person, if you can just try to look at something positively and start small, oh, just look at the flowers, the beauty, the beauty in the sky, the beauty in this, all of a sudden your attitude changes and it helps with your just demeanor you right. feel happier you know if you're always negative about everything that negativity um that causes illness and that right. just brings you down and gives you the depression so that's where finding something that you love 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 and you know it because you'll jump out of bed first thing in the morning to want to do it so you know it's something you love Right. So, you know, I, I hear so many people, you know, they are suffering from some type of anxiety and, and, you know, and you see a lot of the younger generation too, because there's so much yep. stress put on them. Yeah. If they came to you and said, I feel so stressed, I just, I can't cope with life. It's just getting to me. What advice would you give them? Um, at that point, like that sounds very, very serious. I would just say, yes, please get yourself into therapy. Right. And, um, you know, start there because they do need to talk. Sometimes the younger people are afraid to talk to anybody else. You'll talk to your friends, but come to realize you're not the only one in the boat. Right. You're all in the same boat. So if you can just get some help and like just calm yourself down and realize like it's not the end of the world if that happens or if that happens. Right. And, um, and there's a reason you're going through it and think of it as a learning process, but um, it's hard and right. it is very, very hard. It's a different world today than it was 10 years ago. Oh, and definitely. So it, it, I do, I do feel for our younger generation. Yeah, you know, and um, so, you know, you're sending a very good message because basically we talked about the older generation, which is us, you know, yes. and how especially and you don't mothers, look like an older generation. <laughs> well, I am, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to reveal my age now. You no. have to check Facebook for that one. <laughs> but, you know, you know, people have to realize that even, you know, like we, you know, 
men sometimes they have the stress of finances and trying to pay bills if they're married to somebody or even trying to pay their own bills and get ahead in life the competition and so forth and you know women who are mothers we go through all the things that we discussed previously and we go through the anxiety of going through changes in our in our life every day is a new change yeah. a new challenge and the younger generation too so basically you know your your main point right now is therapy is a very key point yeah. And you know what? And I think you made another key point also is that you're not alone. Everybody suffers from at one point in their life, stress or anxiety. And no, don't be embarrassed to talk about it. Right. right. Yeah. And one good thing I am hearing about the younger generation is not like us um, where um, we're embarrassed by it. They're not. So that is one positive side of it that I'm hearing. They will speak about it and they will get help. So I think that that's wonderful, whereas we were more closed, closed mouthed about it and we're embarrassed. But so that's that's a start. Now, you know, I feel like also by reading your books and about reading about fantasy and about reading about all these things that pertain to history and other things, mm -hmm. people can take their minds away. And, yes. for you know, it's so good sometimes to have some quiet time, whether it be meditation, reading a book. So your books, to me, are a way to escape life just for some time and to open, to put your mind like you're actually there. Because what I like about fantasy books is I kind of make in my head that, I'm in that fantasy. I'm part of that book, yes. even though I'm not. And it kind of releases the stress because for a while I just get so embellished into that story that I'm putting aside all the things of, that's going on in my life, the stresses, the kids, the, you know, everything. It's, it's all pushed to the side and I'm just focusing on something that's joyful. And is, yes. was that in your head when you were writing these books to kind of oh. help people escape the, the world of reality and to kind of go into fantasy and desire and make that their reality for just a little while? Sure. As an author, you want to create something and then you want the reader to, as you said, become a part of it to escape. Reality is too real. If you just open up, you know, and uh, and we're, you know, you have ebooks now. You don't have to just open a book with people yeah. that love to read. It is. It's a release um, from anxiety, from what's going on in our world. And you can just delve into something that takes you somewhere else. And it is a pressure release. And I just love to take you on a fantasy adventure. And I love to intertwine it with romance because we all love romance. Oh, my God. I am, so I am a romantic have, to heart. Oh, my God. You, yes. You, and you I have, love so, it. Yeah. So in The Girl in the Toile Wallpaper, I have the... Um, the romance of the young, you know, like just the first love, then the romance of the um, the woman that's just been working her whole life and hasn't experienced that true, true yeah. love. Then I have the romance of the protagonist <laughs> who's <laughs> placed in the toile herself because of love, because centuries ago, so I bring a historical aspect into it and I take you to different worlds. I take wow. you to Florence, Italy, and Sienna in the girl in the 12 wallpaper. And back then, centuries ago, you had to marry who your family wanted you yes. to marry. Yes. But my protagonist, Lily, her heart wants what her heart wants. So that's her romance. And then unfortunately, I have the romance that ends, the divorce. So I have a lot placed in there intertwined with the story because I think just romance is so, so important. Oh my God, you got me yeah. so excited. I can't wait to get your books. I am going to read them all. Oh my God. Where can people find these books? Because now you got me hooked. I want, oh. I want to get your books now. Where do I find them? I, my books are everywhere. I'm on Amazon. I'm at Barnes and Noble. I push the independent bookstores because especially with COVID, these, I mean, these stores have struggled. Yeah. And, um, I, but if my book's not on the shelf, I'll get it for you the next day. But my books are available everywhere. And then I'm, I, you know, I'm open to my readers. So my author website, www.mary, M-A-R-Y-K, Savarese, S-A-V-A-R-E-S-E.com. 
Um, you know, you my Gmail's there if you have any questions. And it'll also lead you to Amazon and other places too. And I have like a whole slew of things that go that one I want to entice you with at my author website with the twalls. And I bring you into a twall room and oh, wow. other things. So Oh, that's very exciting. I can't yeah. wait to you know oh, you have, thank I, you. I assume you're on social media too. There's probably yes. on your website, I guess. Yes. Yes. And yeah, my, my author website connects to my social media. So yes, you have to have all of that today. And it's, it's just, it's, it's fun. It's fun. It's it challenging. Like a lot of fun. You know, as you know yourself as an author, um, I'm not up here yet. So you have to do all your own marketing and everything. And I do work yeah. with a social media person that helps me with that, but it, it's important. Because I think that's one of the things um, publishers in the past, they had to do a little bit more. But now the author has to really be out there yes, and promote the themselves. So, right. There, yes. Exactly. And you know what? That shows how much you love what you do. And it shows oh. that you put a lot of love into these books. Because when you have a passion and you put so much effort to let the world know about your work and about who you are, that shows as a person that you love what you do and when someone loves what they do they don't do it half ass they do it a hundred percent and so I commend you on that, that oh, that's amazing thank you, you. Know. and I commend you on this because I'm enthralled in how you interview and that you have your podcast see I could never do that that is your passion too Oh, thank you so much. You know, it's been great having you on the show. But before we leave, I want you to give people three pointers on what to remember. Of all the stuff we went over, three important pointers, because yes. we discussed your books, but we discussed also about anxiety and we discussed about, you know, empty nesters and younger generation. Yeah. Three, three points about, you know, anxiety, about, about, you know, not, not letting it progress and not being afraid that they're not alone. If you had to give right. them three pointers, what yeah. are three things you'd like to tell them? I would love to say, number one, love yourself wholeheartedly. Never, ever, ever give up on yourself, ever, because you're worth it. And I, whenever I say that, I feel like crying because there's so many people, right, who just want to yeah. give up and they don't think they're worthy. Oh, Everybody. Yeah in God's world, you are worthy. So number one, never give up. Yes, if you are feeling, if you're just not there, your whole self is not there. Yes, do not be embarrassed. Please go get help because there is help everywhere. Yes. And then find that passion, something that you would love to jump out of bed five in the morning, four in the morning and do. Yes. And then um, let it just help you to find yourself right and don't let people put you down that's the other thing everybody's there always to put you down and we all go through it through it Stacy right yes. go like this la 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 <laughs> la and just go on with I agree life, yes right? Oh, yeah. You know, there is a lot. You know, I, I learned that there is jealousy out there. Sometimes yeah. people do not like seeing other people reach their goals or successes, or they like to point out the things that are wrong with another individual. But I learned also that that's because they don't want to face their own things that they need to improve in their own lives. So don't let what others say get you get you down. Exactly. It's all about love and who you are. If you're happy with yourself, then that's all that matters. Yeah. And just keep doing it. Take little baby steps. I took little baby steps. Like I said, I'm an overnight success, a 10 year overnight success. Right. Exactly. And, and, and it doesn't end, but I love to, you know, to do these interviews because it's, it is, it's so much fun. And I love to create yes. and to just go on and keep creating because that's what pulls me away from reality right to just create so I mean I'm you know they say authors well I'm an introvert so. <laughs> you know what the introverts are the, most of the rock stars and singers on stage yeah. are introverts so you know that tells right? you something right there doesn't matter if you're an funny? introvert yeah right isn't that funny until they get up on stage and, and then they let it all out they're a totally right? different person you would never right. think Right. And I feel the same way. I love to, I'm so passionate about my work that I love talking about it, but yet I won't talk about something else of mine. Right. Right. So. Right. You're amazing. I'm telling oh, you. Oh, you are too. Thank you. Now, one more time before we go, let people remind people what your website is so they don't forget. 
Yes, um, www.marykaysavarese.com. So that's M-A-R-Y, middle initial K, Savarese, S-A-V-A-R-E-S-E, all connected, dot com. And I'll pop up, or they look up Tigers Love Bubble Baths and Obsession Perfume, who knew, or the girl <laughs> in the Twa paper. And the second book in the trilogy is currently in editing. I would give you the title, but we don't have a title yet for the second book because it's still in editing. It should be out by the end of the year, if all goes well. And, um, and then the following year, the third book. So um, yeah, those are all things Very that exciting. I'm looking forward to. Yeah, well, congratulations. I'm Thank so you. glad and so honored to have you on this show. And I look forward to maybe talking to you in the future when the other books come out. Maybe you can tell us a little more about what's going on and keep us oh, updated. Absolutely. I'd love to come back. And I'm so honored to be here with you today as well. It's been so much fun. Yes, definitely. It's been, yeah. it's been a pleasure having you on the yeah. show. Thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.